Hi, this is Prios and today I want to talk about the investment philosophy of Philip A. Fisher. He wrote a book in 1958, almost 60 years ago, but most of his thoughts are still up to date. In my eyes, his book is invaluable reading for everyone who wants to be a value investor. The content plan for today is, why should I buy a stock, the 15 points, second, when to sell a stock, third, investment methods of Fisher, and finally I will give a summary. Why should I buy a stock, the 15 points. Due to Philip A. Fisher, you should invest in firms that have specific characteristics. He describes these attributes in his 15 points. Not all, but most of the 15 points should be met to qualify a specific stock as an investment. I will give an overview for what we are looking for in our investment, extracted from the 15 points philosophy of Fisher on the following pages. So why to buy a stock? The company has to have products or services that have great market potential for at least several years. In long term perspective, the company also needs to be able to develop more attractive products and or services. That means we are looking for effective research and development departments and a management that is able to handle change well. In order to place our products on the market, an above average sales organization and marketing is needed. We are also looking for good profit margin. We should wonder if there is enough effort taken to maintain or improve profits because the value of a company is not determined by its current profits but by the ability to create even greater success in the future. Furthermore, we look for a company that treats its personnel well because a satisfied worker will be more productive and loyal. It is also a lot more easy to hire and keep outstanding people if you got a good reputation in personal policy. We are also looking for outstanding executives and executive climate. This means that there is trust and loyalty to the chairman and other managers who are above average skilled. Promotions have to be based on skill and nothing else. It is also necessary that the firm has depth to its management because if this is not the case, the stock will be in trouble if the key man becomes unavailable. That's why development of executive talent is crucial, for example through delegation of authority. The manager the management we are looking for needs to have integrity and honesty. For instance, they should inform us if things are going well, but we need to be informed even more in detail if things are developing unfavorable. We, wa we don't want bad news to be hidden. Bad news even occur in great companies. The right communication of these are crucial. We are also looking for a company that is trying to maximize long-term profits and not today's profits. There is a big difference between these two and reward systems need to be designed to get most value long and not short term. So when to sell a stock? According to Fisher, there are only three reasons to sell a stock. First, when a mistake has been made. Second, when the stock no longer qualifies as an investment due to the 15 points rule. Third, if you got no free cash and a new investment comes up that has even greater prospects than the ones you are holding. Let's come to his investment methods. The biggest jewel to be found in Fisher's investment strategies is the scuttlebutt method. Scuttlebutt means to gather information not from the Wall Street analysts, but from Main Street. Before consider, considering an investment, you should first talk to competitors, consumers, suppliers, employees and former employees. If all the mentioned above respect, like or even fear the investment target, it is really likely to be at least solid. Investment disasters like buying Enron could have easily avoided doing scuttlebutt. Fisher is no friend of market timing. Most of the time he buys a good looking company without taking index highs or potential bubbles on the overall market into account. 
in my opinion, he is right doing so, as it is even more difficult to forecast the development of the whole market than of just one enterprise. Fisher also is a buy and hold guy. He tries to find a company that is outstanding and he is looking to hold it for many years. This in my eyes is the most promising way to make investments because you avoid transaction cost and other fees. The stocks market also had shown a tendency to grow in value for the last 100 years. That also helps creating long term growth. Don't understand me wrong. There are ups and downs, but the long term tendency is to rise. Side note The most successful investor of all times, Warren Buffett, is also using this strategy. Fisher is not a big fan of this diversification. He thinks a few well picked stocks are better than spreading your investment over many items. In theory, he is right. If you are able to pick stocks that are outperforming the market, but in reality most people are not able to do so, even most specialists fail in outperforming the market. In my eyes, he's wrong for the overwhelming majority of actors in the stocks market. The average stockholder should look for as much diversification as possible to avoid getting hit really hard by investment failures. Fisher's attitude to handle mistakes is the following. Don't hold on to a bad investment just because it, it's down to chase back to even. You should sell the stock as soon as it becomes obvious that you made a mistake. Mistakes are happening even to the best. Most important is to learn from, the, from our missteps and don't make the same error again in the future. Let's come to the summary. Following Fisher, we would only invest in a few firms that are overwhelmingly promising. To find this investment opportunities, we would have to invest a lot of time researching, for example, by looking into the annual reports, doing scuttlebutt and taking the and talking to the company's management. When buying a company, we are looking for three things. Functional factors, a highly competitive, low-cost producer with outstanding marketing, research and development and customer orientation that needs to be able to react to future developments fast and appropriately. For instance, by developing new products and also improving old ones. Second, people factors. A company run by great personalities who can handle today's fastly changing world well. Employees at every level should consider the enterprise a good place to work at. Third, business factors. Other business attributes that we are looking for, for instance, economies of scope. This means that linking effects of different products enable us to produce all of them at lower cost than only one product alone. B. Econ economies of scale. These are presented when the production of an item, a piece is getting cheaper the more you produce. An example is the share of the fixed cost at cost per piece decreases with higher quantities. C. Barriers of entry. For example, patents that stop others from getting in that market or, even better, a big lead by technology that is almost impossible to catch up, as patents will run out at some point but technical leadership won't. I like most of his ideas and concepts and I think the ambitious investor will do well following his principles if they are executed well. I hope this was informative. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and or like and also feel free to comment below or to look into my other videos. Bye.